We appreciate it. Okay. So, Joe, are you still with me? I sure am. Great. We were just talking about how you were at this um, rally to get the uh, Mars rover to take more pictures of Sidonia. And that's kind of where we left it. So what happened at the, the rally? Well, just to be correct, this is way before the rover. This was the flyover photos back in 1996. This was the first launch to return back to Mars. Okay. So there was nothing on the planet. It was all the photography of mapping the entire planet before they started sending rovers many, many years oh, later. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I miss you get your You'll get your techie guys that will correct you if you don't get that part right. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Okay. But what was happening is I, with all of this going on at one time, I was getting you know kind of stressed and kind of wore out, trying to put everything together and still do my day job at the same time. You, you kind of know how those – those things work. Oh, and, yes. You know, as a side note here, at this time, I was also highly involved in New Age practices. And a lot of that came in because of my understanding that there seemed to be a spiritual connection with the abduction experiencers and in the UFO phenomenon. One that I wasn't able to quite understand when I first got into ufology, because when I first got into looking at UFOs, I was pretty much a agnostic humanist. But the more I saw that there seemed to be some kind of spiritual connection from what the information these people were bringing into our meetings, I also started looking that part of the you know the research because it seemed to be connected and it seemed to be something that should be looked at. Then I got involved with New Age practices along with them in in the research. And when these two cases I was working on while all this was going on, there seemed to be something very, very dark and very, very sinister with these two cases. And I wasn't quite grasping what was going on there. I had a girlfriend at the time that happened to be one of my researchers. And the reason that she was even doing research with us is because a lot of the information you start discussing with abductees, being that most of your abduction experiences are female, uh, it gets pretty personal and pretty private. And having a female investigator working with you is very handy, and it makes things much easier when you're doing questioning, especially on the personal note. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she happened to be a self-professed Christian at the time. Uh, even though I was in my new age craziness, she still held to her Christian beliefs and put up with my craziness doing the research I was doing. And, you know, and we made it out pretty good that way. But she pulled me aside, and she says, you know, I, I see you're dealing with some something very strange here. Uh, I'm recognizing myself. It seems to be very dark and sinister with these two cases. And I really think you need to step back and let me help you get some protection working in this type of research when you come across cases like this. And I said, well, I'm, I'm not sure what you're talking about here. And I reached in my pocket, pulled out my little bag of of crystals and gems and said, I got plenty of protection right here. You know what this one does and you know what this one does, you know, and she kind of giggled and I said, what? And she says, no, I'm talking about serious protection. And I <laughs> said, well, what are you talking about? And she pulls the Bible out and she says, it's in here. And I said, well, well, wait a minute. That's got nothing to do with the research that I do. I said, uh, I don't see anything in connection there that would make me want to go look at that. And she says, well, I really think you just let me have the time and let me show you something in here. I think you'll be amazed. And I said, no, you know, I'll move on. I got what I need to protect myself in this, this stuff. And she says, well, let me back up a second. She says, I'm going to call you on this. She says, you always said you were the most open-minded, objective investigator there is. And I said, all right, you got me. Show me what you have. And she showed me something in that Bible, something called the gospel message and something showing me where authority comes from with this person, Jesus Christ, that's talked about in the Bible. And after I heard her share this information with me, I looked at her and I said, you know what? I want that protection. And I made a change in my life at that point. And I went from where I started out as an agnostic humanist looking at this phenomenon that was my objective of view of all of this, to becoming a New Age practitioner and seeing the, the world of ufology, to now becoming a Christian and still being involved in this realm. And I was going, getting ready to see this from another 
set of, you know, point of view. Right. And as I became a Christian, I, and as a person who's always looking for answers, my next set of quest of information was, what was I now as a Christian? And I spent the next couple months learning and understanding about Christianity, and I was committed to becoming a Christian. And I also had to look at what was my involvement as a Christian with this UFO phenomenon? Does it even go together? And, you know, I had to ask the question, you know, do the two really belong together at all? Or is this something I should really put away and not, and just move away from it and move on with my life? Well, I kind of got an answer and the answer was, no, you have something here and you need to continue it, and you, you're going to get in ready to get an answer to be able to take back to where you came from. And I didn't quite understand that, and there were some things that happened, but what happened was is I had to relook at some of the cases that I had. And there was a case that I had worked on about six months prior to becoming a believer, a Christian believer, and we relooked at that case, and my partner and I had sat down and redone, relooked at the, the VCR tape that we had used for the interview, this is how far back it was. Mm-hmm. And um, two-hour interview with a guy, and we sat there, and I'm, I'm looking at him, and it's like we had never heard anything this guy had told us at the time. It's like he had shared his, his whole story over two hours, and we, we just weren't listening or something. I don't know. Because during this interview tape that we were watching, this man makes a claim that during his experience, He had cried out in the name of Jesus Christ, and the experience abruptly stopped. Mm -hmm. And he woke up in the bed in sheer panic and did not know what to make of it, except that he had actually stopped this experience. And I said, how did we miss this? This guy, we should have seen this. when We were sitting in front of him when he told us this before. But it's like we were blinded or deafened at the time that he was actually speaking live to us. But mm-hmm. here as a believer, a new Christian believer, I could recognize what this man was telling us. And we went back and talked to him, and we said, you know, we, we just re-listened to your story, and we wanted to confirm that this is actually what happened. Well, in all the research we had done into abductions um, that had been research that the top researchers in the world had done, First of all, they were saying that it wasn't possible to stop an abduction experience. All of them said that. Right. And so I I thought, what do I have here? You know, what is this? Is this just something bizarre, something unusual, something out of the ordinary that maybe I should just discard? So I personally went on the quest to find as many of the top abduction researchers as I could, talk to them personally, and ask them, have you ever come across anything like this, you know, because this is so unusual and so against everything you guys have written about, you know, and recorded so that we could learn about these experiences too. And as I talked to them personally on the phone, um, each one said, can we go off the record? And off the record means I can tell you what they said, but not who said it. You know, because I've always respected anonymity when somebody asks for it. As a MUFON member, you have to do that, you know, mm-hmm. and I've always stuck to it. So what is, once we went off the record, each one that I was able to talk to said, yes, I've come across cases like that, where somebody was singing a hymn or praying or calling out to Jesus and the experience stopped. And I said, really? You know, each of them was telling me this, and I had asked each of them, you know, why haven't you ever said this? Why haven't you shared this piece of the information? You're saying all along that it's never possible that you guys have actually come across cases like this. And there were two answers that seemed to come out from each of them. And the first one was, we didn't know what to make of it. And, you know, I would have been fine with that answer because... I would have said the same thing, most likely. You know, here I was asking them because I didn't know what to make of it. Right. But it was the second answer that they always gave that put the thing in question. And the second answer was we were afraid to go there because of our credibility in the realm. And they were afraid to go into the idea that there was spirituality or religion involved in possibly with the experience. And I said, well, wait a minute. I said, so what I'm seeing here is real. You guys are supporting the idea that 
something I've come across here is real. There are more cases like it. I said, I got nothing to lose here. I don't have a, you know, a, a credibility built up in the realm in any way. I'm a hardworking guy. I am an investigator. And I said, I'm going to go look for these cases, and I'm going to collect the data for these cases, and I'm going to make sure that this piece of the puzzle gets added to the picture so we can see what this phenomenon is about. And, you know, each one of them that I had talked to said, please do, because we can't. And, you know, in 20-some 20, 20 years of research into all of this, I've had some researchers that have really come against me quite violently when I share this research and I share the findings that I've done over 20-some years. But I will tell you to this day that every one of them that I, was, that I just talked about, that I talked mm -hmm. to personally and I have kept their anonymity, they've never come against me in any way. Yeah. You know, they've yeah. never supported me, but they've never come against me. But what I'm sh sharing with you here is there has been, you can say this, that there's actually been a cover-up, lack of sharing the information. And it hasn't been by the government, which everybody thinks is doing all the cover-up. You know, this cover-up's been, for whatever reason, by the researchers themselves that we've been relying on for the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't hold it against them. I understand what they were up against, you know, but at least they ask that I do complete this project, and I have. And I, what we did was, at that point, we knew we were on to something very important. We knew it needed to be documented. We knew it needed to be put out there. So we've made ourselves known that we were looking for these type of cases, and we gave people that had done this and had a testimony of this type of experience where they had either stopped an experience while it was happening or was able to move it to the next level and stop the experience from happening again in their lifetime and get their lives back, give them an opportunity to be able to share these experiences, these testimonies, and have them recorded and documented where otherwise they were not being recorded and they were being suppressed. And over the years, the 20-some years that I've been in this, looking for these particular cases as evidence to something that has not been wanted in this field, I've worked with probably 550-plus cases personally, and there's some 150 or so of these test personal testimonies on the website that I post freely for anybody mm -hmm. to look at. You know, I've never wanted to suppress anything that I've worked on here, but I've only found in all of this one way that people have been able to stop this experience and stop it from happening again in their lives, and that is by calling out on the name and authority of Jesus Christ. I've asked over the years for somebody else to bring me something else that works also and works to the point that these that, that name works. Mohammed's never worked, Buddha's never worked, Krishna's never worked, Mickey Mouse has never worked. And it isn't a magic word. There's more involved in, in all of this for this to actually help people. But right. that's what C D four is and that's what we've been doing for twenty some years. Wow. Okay. You know, this just opens up like my brain has got 500 questions. I'm trying to get them all in order here on paper. Uh, the number one thing was when your friend asked you for that, she said you need higher protection. What did you call upon to help you at that point? Did you call on God? Did you call on Jesus? Did you call on angels? What What are you using for protection, Joe? Before Before she introduced me to the Bible? No, after. I'm just curious. The, you went from crystals to what? <laughs> crystals to Christianity. Crystals and to Christianity. Was, yes. And crystals and UFOs to Christianity. And it was Christianity meaning that I accepted Jesus Christ as, as Lord and Master in my life, and I was able to, to, to be able to be shown how you can actually have a personal, a, a personal relationship with this Jesus Christ. And let him rule your life. And, you know, along with that comes a guideline that you're able to, to live by and a standard that you're, be, you're able to survive in this world and, and the next, and that's the Bible itself. Yeah. Well, okay, so let me ask you this. We were having a nice long conversation the other day, 
And I forgot to, to ask you this while we were talking about it. At one point, you brought up the apostles, and you were talking about how they were all hardworking guys, because we were talking about the affairs of the world and how people just don't work anymore and blah, blah, blah. And it, it was a great way to tell me that, you know, if you're going to live with this personal re- relationship with Christ, that you got to work. you got to, you know, you got to contribute to society. you got to contribute, what have you. Jesus, like you said, Jesus never said, get on welfare and wait around for me to come and save you. <laughs> and, uh, which is really funny if you think about it. Um, but the reason I bring this up is because... God, did I just lose my thought? I think I just lost my train of thought. Oh, no, I can't believe I did that. Uh, The reason I bring this up is because you have a personal relationship with Christ. And how do you live a personal relationship with Christ knowing that he probably was an extraterrestrial himself, maybe, or that he is the creator of these beings that might be coming here harassing us? So how does that work for you? I mean, it, do you think he's an extraterrestrial or a type of alien, or what? What do you think he might be? And did God, you know God brought all this this demons to us? So are are the aliens demons? And shall we go down that path? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can we can go we can go down that path, you know, because once you get into actually studying as a Christian now, and as still as an investigator, I wanted to understand what God's Word, that is supposedly what Christians live by, that, that is the message and is the information that God left for us. That's the communication that was given to us to be able to live and answer everything we have for questions, you know, throughout our life. And if you look at what God has said, and it's, He says in there, this message is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, so, in other words, it's not going to be any new messages, because everything is there for us. It, it circumvents all of time. And if you look in there, it actually, Scripture doesn't allow, in other words, God's Word doesn't allow for extraterrestrial life out there. The Gospel message was sent to this earth. The Gospel message was for the people on this earth. You know, and it's quite fascinating, because when you start getting into this realm, the first thing that's thrown at you is, how can you say there's no life out there? Look how huge this universe is. Well, you know, that's apples and oranges compared to what we're working with here. Are we working with extraterrestrial entities that are visiting this Earth, or do you want to talk about the possibility of life way out there? Because it's not the same, okay? I don't believe we're dealing with the same thing. I believe that these entities that we're dealing with here have been here all along, and I believe that the mess- show, if you look at the message that they bring, it's always anti-Christ, anti-Bible, anti-creation. Why is it, that's a red flag if you look at it from an honest researcher's perspective, because why do these entities seem to share a message from all the way across the universe to come here to share a message that's against one type of belief system when there's so many different belief systems here on this planet? What do they got against that just one? That's a red flag well, that needs to be wait, looked wait, at. Wait, Joe, I, I've never heard of an extraterrestrial telling somebody that they couldn't be Christian when they're being abducted. There's a whole bunch of communications with the contact D level. Remember, we're, we're talking experiencers. Uh, right. Con- Contactees that have messages that they get during the, from the experiences, or you're dealing with the... Uh, just the abduction experiencers who have an experience, but not usually communication. There's much, much documented communication uh, that's gone on between the contactees over the years. My partner, Guy Malone, actually does a talk on that that's over two hours long. It goes into all of the information that, that has been shared, and it's always against the Christian belief system for some reason. And again, that's a red flag that we have to look at. Why is it only that one? Um, the abilities that these entities have, the, the abilities, meaning that the, the way they interact, the way they move around, the way that they come and go, be, seem, seemingly to be inter- interdimensional more than physical. Now, a lot of the researchers are looking at the experience more and more that way, being a physical experience, being more of a uh, interdimensional type experience or a mind experience. Um, that's another red flag, you know, that 
moves us away from the idea that these are just extraterrestrials. And if you're looking at it from the biblical perspective, everything that they're that I'm describing here that we're seeing in a supposed technology is actually seems to be ability, if you look at it from the uh, biblical side, the ability of what is referred to as fallen angels or, or demonic entities. Right. And that seems to be what... I believe what we're dealing with here, even valet question, if, you know, back years ago, that this could be something that's been here all along. It seems to match the demonology of old, you know, and tie that in with it seems that the only thing that seems to be overpowering this experience is the name and authority of Jesus Christ. That's a lot of pointing to the same direction of this possibly being more demonic than it is an extraterrestrial experience. And, and I'm not, ar- yeah, and I'm not arguing with you at all about that because I've always wondered. I've always sat on the edge, going, "But you know, this is awfully strange. Why would they come all the way here to just to get our eggs and, and our sperm? You know, right. what do they need it for?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god hey uh we have about uh, a minute and a half left before the next break and i can tell you right now that it's the chat room is going to explode in the last half hour of the show tonight folks you get to take cut loose and ask any questions you want of joe jordan so remember to do that i see that neutron's already on the on the hunt <laughs> He's already got this first question up there, I think. So, um, yeah, so we're going to have a good time in the last half hour. So remember, everybody in chat, get your questions to, ready for Joe, and they can run the gamut because Joe can answer anything. I already know that. He is, uh, he, he'll, he'll answer it. I know he will. So, okay, so we'll be back in just a moment. And, uh, MJ, are we early or late? I, you know, I can't tell what my clock is doing. It looks like it's frozen together so i thought i had a crutch (laughs) no 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 so when robert was on i got you know i started shaking i started getting sick oh god it was just ugly and by the time i got onto the show i was so petrified you guys it was just like the very first time i was on radio four years ago i was so petrified as a matter of fact four years ago on my very first radio show i had to bring my father on with me because Ten minutes into the show, I would start being sick into the garbage can, and he used to have to come in just so I could be sick. <laughs> so that's how that's how scared I was of being on coast. It was a nightmare. But I'll tell you what, after the first 30 minutes went by and I was with George alone, you know what? Then the old Lorian kicked in, and by the second hour, I was raring to go, man, and I'm ready to go back. So, yeah, someday I'll be back on coast, but who knows when. But, yeah, it was fun, and I had a great time, and I hope you guys listened to it. Um, I was petrified, though, so if I didn't make any sense at all, you guys know why. (laughs) So there you are. Okay, Joe, are you still with me? I'm still with you. Great, wonderful. So, okay, where were, oh, I was asking you whether you thought Jesus Christ was an alien or not. (laughs) How are we going to get to that question? (laughs) I do not believe he's an alien. Um, well, he I has believe what the word tells us he does. He has superpowers. Are you there? Yeah, I'm there. But he has more than that. You know, I mean, people that don't know him and don't know who he actually is, and and what you know God's word says he is, he might appear as or seem to be coming as an extraterrestrial, but. By by no means is that what it actually is, you know. Uh, he came here, he was human when he was here, and he left, but he's it's not over, you know. He's, he still sits on the right hand of the Father, and he's still the intercessor between us here on Earth and, you know, God the Creator of the universe. You know, you can Joe, have a personal relationship with him. Exactly. And every time you say that he sits at the right hand of our Father... You bring up for me a very interesting part of the Hebrew uh, belief of the um, Kabbalah. And, you know, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that correctly or not, but they believe in a different dimension where angels live and God lives. And uh, I'm sure Christ is there with them, even though the, the Jewish people don't believe that Christ is there. But do you think that that is where the whole idea of Christ being with God in this realm 
um, of heaven comes from? Is from the old Hebrew religion, or where do you think it comes from? Well, you got to understand that you know Christian Christianity. Its roots are, you know, Hebraic. You know, where the Christian the, the Christian themselves is, are grafted into the root, and the root being, you know, the Hebrews at the time. You know, and in God's chosen people were the Hebrews. But when Jesus came and gave the opportunity for all to come to um, come to the truth and all to have the opportunity to reconnect with God through through Him, you know, we were grafted into that to that line. So a lot of our heritage is, you know, is Judaism. Um, mm-hmm. We don't, but at the same time, being separated from. But the idea that it's another realm that they're in, uh, yes, you know, they talk about the heavenly realm and, and the earthly realm. We're the earthly realm. We don't have the ability to go to the heavenly realm until another time, you know, after our life passes. But the entities that you spoke of, the angels themselves, God's angels, and most likely, if you follow the story, the fallen angels uh, that were early in the story of the Bible, they all have the ability to, and you can see that through scripture stories, where they had the the ability to interact in our realm, um, and that's something that makes you look at the experience itself of the induction experience. How these entities seem to be able to interact in our realm, but don't seem to be actually in our realm, and that's that seemingly spiritual type experience more than a physical type experience. There may be physical attributes to the abduction experience, but the experience itself is primarily more a spiritual experience than it is physical. Interesting. So you, okay, so, so, okay, I'm still trying to grasp around why Christ has such great power, um, and God has such great power for that matter. If they're interdimensional beings, they, they've got to be able to, they're able to do things here on in this 3D dimensional world that is so different than what we're used to that why can't they just manifest little demons that come around as aliens and or why do they even care to do it in the first place why why even bother with creating that kind of little you know gray or reptilian or whatever why would they even care to do that i mean don't you think they just wouldn't exist here how do you think they're happening? I don't believe that God and Jesus and, and the hierarchy of the universe, they're the ones that created the what we, what we appear to see as aliens. Okay? okay? I think that's, I believe that the alien persona is a facade of these demonic entities. They, oh. it, the demonic entities are using a guise of technology, a guise that would be accepted in this culture and lifetime of us, this this moment in time, something that w- they could interact and get our attention and get us to be able to become acclimatized to them in a guise that would be acceptable. Years ago, you hear about elves and fairies and leprechauns and all of those things. Well, we think of that pretty much as mythology. You know, if they showed up today, we'd kind of <laughs> chuckle and move on. I think that that's, I don't know what was in my coffee this morning, but, you know, when it comes to aliens and of whatever the appearance they come in and and the idea that of the technology that seemingly comes with the experience, that seems to be readily accepted. And, you know, what's interesting is it's talked about that this is a worldwide event. But, you know, we talked about this Sunday that actually it really isn't a worldwide event. It's not exactly the same in every culture. You know, so whatever these entities are, which they seem to be very sinister in nature, you can't actually trust them. So to me, they're not good guys, and they'll come in whatever appearance it takes for you to accept them and for you to be enticed by them and for you to be seduced by them to where you want to be able to work for them. Well, I'm glad you said that because I think I mentioned this to you on Sunday. Um, I have friends that have been abducted their entire life, and one of the two women that I know, she always sees a gorgeous guy, 
And she always loves going on the ship because she gets to hang out with this gorgeous guy. And the other woman sees them for what they are, you know, these little gray monsters that she calls them. And they aren't the cute grays. I don't know. She sees these ugly ones. I don't know what it is. Anyhow, she sees this ugly gray thing. And she's screaming the whole time and wishing it would stop. And the other lady can't wait to be abducted. So, you're right. I it, The minute I heard that story years ago, I was like, oh, my God, you know, they come to you as what they want you to see. And some people can see through the truth, I guess. And they're not buffaloed by this, you know, gorgeous guy thing or whatever it is that a woman would want to see or a man or whatever. And they actually see the reality of it all. And I think those are the people that have, you know, the worst time of it. But again, those would be the people that would be invoking the name of Jesus Christ faster than somebody who absolutely believes that they're dealing with some beautiful Nordic guy, right? Most likely, yes. And that's something that also brings up another point that we talked about is the question of researchers still asking today, why does this happen to certain people? Why do only certain people have the abduction or contactee experience? And, you know, the, the original question that CE4 brought out 20 years ago when we started the research was, are Christians being abducted by aliens? We wanted to be able to document that answer and, and go on record with that. And that was the first question we put out. And what we came back with was yes and no. You know, well, how can you get two answers? Well, you can get two answers because what we found were there were two types of Christians. There was a walk-the-walk believer who, you know, his whole life was focused on on God's commandments and and a a personal relationship with Jesus himself and focused always on, you know, the spiritual aspects of God in Jesus. And then the the talk-the-talk believer who was, yes, a believer in the heart, but didn't walk the line as straight and narrow like they should and always still had some open doors in their life that they hadn't got to and closed yet. And that seemed to be the avenue for these experiences to happen. Did they still have the same authority by calling on the name and authority of Jesus Christ? Yes, they could stop the experience. But were they able to terminate it completely from their life? More difficult because they still had open doors that was allowing these entities to come in. And, you know, the, Joe, that brings me to something that's always bothered me about the whole alien abduction thing. Now, I, I have always said I keep an open mind to all of it, okay? So I'm going to explore down your path. I'm going to trip down your path with you tonight. Um, many years ago, I when I first started down the UFO phenomena, I came across Carla Turner. And I don't know if you know much about Carla Turner. Sure, but, I do. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, Barth- Bartholik, uh, I can't remember her first name, Betty Bartholik or something like that. Um, and uh, another friend of mine, his name is um, uh, James Bartley. And they absolutely believe that these reptilians are just horrible demon things. And so are the, the greys and what have you. But, but they, I think Carla also thought that our government was playing into them and using them to attack the the you know the the populace of this this nation for some nefarious reason now do you know much about her at all or, or can you comment on her and then we'll go on down this path well from what i've studied with her and watched her talks that you know are still recorded and still available today um you know she was very, I believe she was very, very, very close to finding what I believe to be the truth before she passed away. And I really have to question, did maybe she actually finally understand this before she passed on? You know, you're bringing up that they did believe that, um, that these reptilian types that some people see and experience and the greys that a lot experience that were the more sinister and more demonic in nature type of entity. But at the same time, looking at this over the 20-some years and the many cases that I've worked with, what I believe is that they're all the same entities. They're all demonic entities. It's just that the ones that seem to be, you know, like what we call the Nordics or the ones that are seem to be more spiritually advanced or just better at the deception uh, than the, the darker entities are. And it may be all along that the whole demonic realm is using this as a good cop, bad cop scenario 
to get people more involved. They say, well, you can't trust these bad guys, but we'll make these good-looking guys come in here, and you can trust them. But they're all from the same source. They're all here to deceive. Yeah. They're all here to sidetrack us. Yeah, I, interesting. Uh, Neutron in the chat room is telling us that Turner, Bartholik, and uh, Mag Malanga? Malanga collected 10 years of abduction data before publishing. Malanga is still alive today, has recently become blind, is continuing Turner's and Bartholik's data, and has found incredible stuff. Oh, that's interesting. Neutron will have to get her on the air. Um, anyhow, so... Um, yeah, because I, you know, I when I went down this path, the first thing that ever came to my head after watching Carla Turner and and James and you know quite a few people out there, I said to myself, "How could any of this be a good thing? How could any of it be good?" And then I started questioning. Now I've never been one of these people to believe in channels. You guys will never channelers. You guys will never hear me have a channeler here on the show. I just, I, I have a really hard time with it because my whole theory is if you're hearing voices and someone's telling you all this beautiful, fun stuff, how do you know they're telling you the truth? You know? I mean, I, I, cause <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's my Catholic upbringing. I just, I never trust anything that I can't see or touch or smell. I don't know why. Aren't I terrible? But anyhow, do you get my point here, folks? I'm just trying to make a point. I, it's just that it, I just can't trust it until it's there in front of me. You know, it could be a dead person using you. I mean, don't you guys ever watch Constantine or any of those <laughs> movies where they're they're banishing the evil? You know, if it's a beautiful woman, they banish it. It turns into a horrible devil. I mean, it's just like ah, you know, I don't trust anything of the other realm until it actually proves itself that it's you know worthy of it. It's from love or or source or God. That's my whole opinion here. Anyhow, having said that, Joe, what's your opinion about that? Uh, do you trust anybody who's telling you they're hearing, you know, God talking to them? Or what do, you, what, what do you do in those cases? Well, in those cases, you know, you have to have a standard to judge everything by. And as a believer in Jesus Christ, and as a true believer in that, you know, he is the all-powerful uh, name that he is. He is the son of the creator that was sent here to help us. And I do understand, and I believe that the word that the, God, the Bible itself, which is called God's word, was given to us to be able to have a standard to survive and live by. I believe it is infallible. I believe that there's what people think are misunderstandings in there are just issues that people haven't had the opportunity to be taught and shown that there is no misunderstandings. It is an infallible word of the creator of this universe. And so that's a, it's a standard that everything can be judged by. And if it doesn't line up with what God already said, remember, everything he put in there, he said it's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's not going to be different because it's, it's a new future. It's not going to be different 10 years from now. No, God's word's the same all the time. So there's your standard. If you have no standard to judge what some entity is giving to you, it's a free-for-all. You may as well listen to every voice that pops into your head and not even question it. And that's the scary thing that you were just talking about, is how can yeah. people do that? How can people open themselves up to something that they cannot test, they cannot judge, and they cannot verify? You wouldn't answer the door to somebody and let them in your home unless you could verify who they said they were. But here... You, you're letting these people, these entities, come in and control your thoughts, control your entire life, make make a, a wreck of your entire life. And if you're married and you have children, you're allowing the same thing to happen to your children. And they didn't ask for that. That is an absolute scary thing. And probably in a, in a court case, if you, if you got involved, they'd probably take your children from you if they found out it was happening. You know, so I think this is absolutely scary stuff. And it's something that I can't believe people actually sit there and experience your meetings and said, man, I'd really like to have these experiences so I could understand them. Are you kidding me? Do you have any idea what you're asking for? And do you have any idea that there's entities listening to you? You know, that's, that's insane. And yet we hear it all the time. And because of that, we've got people that are having their lives turned upside down from this experience and destroyed from this experience because they couldn't trust these entities. And then yeah. because of what I'm able to show and able to put out there, 
at least they have a hope. What CE4 has been able to offer all these years is an absolute verifiable hope. It's not just we built a database saying, here's hundreds of cases that verify that this name is above all names and stops this experience. I'm not saying that our cases tell you the abduction experience is real. That's not what the testimonies tell you. We have an, a way that we found that can terminate the experience itself. Okay? That's what the evidence shows. Not only that, you know, in evidence, in, in theory and hypothesis, science is always looking for something to show that it's, it's repeatability, okay? It's got to have that repeatability factor in there, the whole ground. There's nothing in the field of ufology that is repeatable, nothing. Nobody can call in a ship, the same ship or any ship, over and over again. You know, Prophet Yahweh, they, you know, he tried to do that, but he, he can't even keep that up on a regular basis. So there's nothing repeatable in the realm of ufology except, except, if you come to me and you say, I saw these cases on your website, I'm having these terrible experiences, and I'd really like them to stop, can you help me? I can say, by what I have found on these cases that works for them, I do believe I can help you stop this experience. And we've been able to help many stop the experiences by what we have found that others have used. That's repeatability. Yeah, and that yeah. is what upsets people in the realm, is that this seems to be the only repeatability. I didn't ask for this. I got this research by accident. And I got it because nobody else wanted to work on it. Okay, yeah. I don't push this because it's something that was an agenda that I had. I push it because it holds its ground. And it works. And it works. Yeah, there you go. Well, if you now, want to try and, the tinfoil hat, you have at it. <laughs> but when you're you're done messing with that, come see us. We'll help you. Well, yeah, here's the burning question, and I'm sure everybody listening to the show tonight is doing this. Now, let's say you say it works. Do you have to be a total Christian believer for it to work? Do you have to have, have been saved? Basically, do you have to have Jesus Christ in your life? for it to work for you? Or can you just be like me, who's always on the fence going, well, yeah, maybe, I don't know if I'm saved or not. And uh, I, some one night I walk out of the office and there's an ugly gray standing there. If I scream the name of Jesus Christ, is he going to help me? Even though I may not be his, his child yet? There's two, there's two answers to that. Just like I said, do Christians get abducted by aliens? I said, yes and yes. Okay, <laughs> or you know, no and yes. Here, the same thing, but both answers are going to be yes. What we have found is for the experience to be terminated completely from your life, yes, you must have a full blown allegiance with Jesus Christ. This is what this whole thing is about: is about allegiance. The enemy wants you to have allegiance with them. He wants to do everything he can to take you away from the one true God. Now. If you're not that person yet, you're still walking the line, you've, you've heard all of this, but you've made no commitment, and because of all of this, those entities try to stand their ground and shake you to the core and show up in the hallway as you're leaving the office, and you yell out, in Jesus' name, you must be gone, because you chose that moment in pure belief, he'll stand by you. And you will see the evidence that cannot be refuted. And that evidence will change your life. And I guarantee you will become that believer that decides to terminate it completely from their life. Right. And and that brings up the whole point that I was trying to make earlier that I lost my train of thought on. And that is this. So many alien abductees and or contactees or whatever you want to call them don't want to sever that relationship. No matter how horrible it is or how beautiful they think it, especially when it's beautiful, they don't want to do it. I mean, we're talking about, I was sitting next to a woman and an experiencer group who swear she's having sex with a reptilian every night or, you know, whatever, and she's, she's loving it, you know. That woman will never be able to be free because she doesn't want to be free. And nothing's happened to her that says, you know, this is a horrible experience. She's enjoying herself. So she's basically, you know, sleeping with the devil, <laughs> in and, my and opinion. And you're absolutely right. But I will tell you that 
it's very hard for us to reach people like that. But I will tell you that these entities eventually let you down, okay? I've seen that over and over and over. For many years, these people will go on, but all of a sudden, it's like they've been abandoned, and they miss the seduction. They miss, you know, everything that was seemed to be good about the experience, and they feel completely let down, and that's when it's time in their life that we have the opportunity that we can offer them something better. Yeah. Because, you hey, know, this experience Joe, has taken them Joe, away. Hey, Joe, I hate to do this. I can't believe that I looked down and I, it's 930. we got to take a break. So okay. <laughs> we'll get back to this, folks. I promise. We're having a great time here with Joe Jordan. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a few moments. And, wow, what a great night I'm having tonight. I feel so good because... Uh, you know, it's very seldom I get to talk about all the negative stuff that goes on <laughs> with the alien abduction. When I have James Bartley on my show, I get to. And, you know, there's not that many people left in the UFO community that I get to interview that absolutely uh, just believe this is the absolute truth. And you, you know what, guys? I, I hate to say it, but I've always been a little bit much more on the this is the dark side of the force type of thing than I've ever been on this is the light and airy fairy side of things. I just don't talk about it much, but since I have Joe on the show tonight, I've decided that I'm going to cut loose and let you guys know where I stand. If you took a pie, three quarters of it to me in the UFO community is a scary, scary place to be. And I think people make they just don't pay enough attention to the dark side of this whole thing. And the reason I say that is because all of you know that listen to me on a regular basis know that I got very involved in the mind control um, aspects of what I think is going on in our government. And the the whole alien stuff has popped up in that. The, the Nazi stuff has popped up into it. And the Satanism is rampant. Satanism is rampant in mind control, and I just absolutely believe that the because the UFO stuff does crop up, it, it can't all be that good. There's just something not right here with this picture for me. I've always felt that. And so there you have it. I mean, that's my absolute deepest, darkest, you know, fear is that... Um, this is all really very evil, and we're all going to pay a price for, you know, flirting with the devil, as they say. But I'm a warrior, and I do know, and I was asking Joe about this the other day. I said, what do you think of Joan of Arc? Because the reason I asked you that, Joe, is because I woke up one day, and I felt like I was Joan of Arc fighting the aliens. <laughs> And I just, I knew how she felt. It was like she was on a mission from God, and that's how I felt. And I thought, you know what? There's got to be a way to expose all this. And But the, the best part about my job is I get to listen to everybody's story. And I can make my own mind up. And that's what I tell everybody here on my show, Joe. You know what? I'm not going to tell you to believe in anything. I'm not going to tell you not to believe in anything. I'm not going to push you in one direction. I'm not going to say that disclosure is the key. I'm not going to say Joe Jordan's the key. I'm not going to say MUFON's the key. I'm not going to say anybody's the key. I'm going to say the key is in your heart. And you need to know and you need to use your mind and you need to use discernment to figure out what is the right thing and the wrong thing in this whole community. And that's where people are falling down in this community. There's too many people just falling blindly, you know, where people lead them. And I'm telling you, it's not always the right place to go, folks. So listen to yourself. Be true to yourself. Be true to your God, whatever that may be, and do the right thing. You know, don't, don't follow people that, you know, you don't know. You know, don't get involved in these cults. Don't, you know, I'm not that MUFON's a cult or anything, but <laughs> you know what I mean, folks. Just, you know, be true to your heart and be honest with yourself, and it'll all turn out right in the end. Right, Joe? Right. And, you know, you're spot on with this. And it's not that whenever I come on, I try to convince people that I'm absolutely correct in all this. All I want to do is give you the opportunity to understand that there's a piece of information that, they don't want to seem to be shared out there. I don't get invited to these conferences. I have to hold a conference if I want to be able to speak at it. You know, it's, that's why I said it's the unwanted piece of the puzzle. It's, it's, you know, we're all looking to put that UFO puzzle together to get an answer to what this is. And all I'm saying is when you dump the pieces out on the table and you go to put the pieces together, make sure that this piece gets included. 
Because if you're not including this piece of the picture, you're either not going to get the complete picture or you're going to get only the picture of what you want it to be. Okay? And if you're looking honestly to do honest research and to make sure that everything is covered, then you have to have all the pieces laid out. And that's all I've asked for all these years is to let this one piece that nobody seems to want because it touches on something that really scares the hell out of people, and that's having that they have an authority over them that they don't have a control of, the authority of Jesus Christ and his commandments, okay? People want their spirituality, but they don't want any accountability with it. That's why there's so many other religions out there, because this one single one has serious accountability that comes along with it. It's the one that's most freely accessible and freely given to you with no re- no restrictions, no requirements. Come as the worst person you are. He'll take you, okay? And that's all he asks is you make an allegiance to him. Where this, this, this demonic realm is offering you all sorts of things to entice you away from it. It seduces you with, with so-called special knowledge, which is a powerful seduction you see in the, the New Age and the UFO realm, is everybody's after that next piece of special knowledge that they can have before the next guy. It's that carrot on a stick that's constantly being dangled out there. They're all looking for the newest next thing, okay? And, and yeah. that seduction is really, really powerful. And that's most of the key that's involved with these experiences that these entities are using. And, and yeah. that's a danger. And you know, in the, in the scriptural sense, that's the same carrot that was stuck out there in the Garden of Eden to Eve, you know. The, 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 don't eat from the tree, you know, of good and evil, of a tree of knowledge, you know. But that's what the, 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 the demonic entity seduced her with. You too can be like God. And how can you be that way? Through knowledge. So it's always been the seduction of special knowledge. Okay, but you can never reach enough special knowledge. That becomes a works-based religion. Christianity is the only one that's not a works-based religion. You come freely by making an allegiance to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's it. Yeah, and people people who are seeking in that realm, I've noticed, Joe, they don't seem like they're ever fulfilled. You know, I have lots of friends... Yeah, I have lots of friends in the New Age community, and they they love to follow. First it was Seth, and then I think it was, uh, God, I can't remember the next one that came down the pike. I just don't remember. But Bashar is the big one now, and a lot of people listen to David Wilcock. And, you know, and they come to me and they say, Lorraine, what do you think of blah, blah, blah? And I'll look at them, and I love all my friends dearly, but I look at them and I say, do you believe it in your heart? Is it part of you? Is it part of your, is it what you know to be true? And they look at me and they go, well, I don't know. He seems to have good answers. I said, well, good answers aren't going to make you get out of bed every morning and keep you safe and keep you, you know, keep your food on the table and, you know, whatever it is. I said, Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. uh, Again, we're back to where's your standard? They have no standard. You know, and and trusting in your own heart is dangerous a lot of times, because if you don't trust in your own heart, you've got to have everything given to you, which is right or wrong, to to make a rightful choice. And a lot of times, the only thing they're getting is what's wrong. So they they think whatever they choose to be right is only from one of the things that's been wrong that's been taught them. You know, and and that's that's part of this UFO puzzle thing. If you're going to make an honest decision on what this whole thing is about, You've got to have everything to choose from. You can't leave this one aspect out because, oh, I don't like that because it's Christianity, or I don't like that because it deals with Jesus. No, no, I don't want that piece in here. You can't do that if you're honestly looking for research. Yeah, I agree. And I think one of the the one thing that sets people apart that have had horrific UFO encounter or alien encounters or whatever is going on in their life is when they come out of it, Joe, they know who they are because at some point during all this, 
you don't you wonder if you've lost yourself and that's sure. the despairing part and i have had such an amazing life i you know i got to say i've almost died when i was 18 months old and it never got easier so my life has been one sequence of events for me to figure out who i am and stand up for myself and I know that sounds very like I'm preaching here, guys, but, you know, the bottom line is until you know who you are, how can you even discern who to trust out in the whole UFO community? I mean, you've got to be very careful out there. There's a lot of very scary and evil people out there, and they're in all communities, as we all know. So, anyhow, that's just from my point of view. You've got to know who you are, Joe, before you can ever listen to your own heart. And I agree with you on that. And I just think it's super important that people are very discerning in the UFO community because it's a place, I call it the Wild West of, of ufology because it sure. really is. I mean, I felt like at the MUFON Symposium this week, it was like the Wild West. I should have been carrying guns, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Because really, everybody's out there for themselves. It's it's just nuts. It's it's it, I've never seen such a free for all in my life. You know, like we talked about on Sunday, when I do my talks, uh, when I get the opportunity to speak on stage, you know, at the end of the talks, I always tell people, you know, I got to tell you up front, do not trust Joe Jordan. You don't know who I am. That's um, right. I, I haven't shown you my credentials when I knocked on your door. So if you're really smart, don't trust me. If I'm bringing something to sell to you, which is the evidence of the research that I've done for 20 years, I'm going to tell you, test the evidence, trust the evidence after you test it. The evidence is what I want you to see. I don't want you to rely on just what I've told you tonight on this radio show. For you guys that are listening out there, it's not about me, Okay. I work for a living. I can walk away from this in a heartbeat, okay? But I'm only committed to this because I found something that actually follows what is required. It's repeatable. It's repeatable. It's repeatable. That shows me that this is something that is real. But go to the testimonies. The testimonies are the evidence. The testimonies are the findings of the research I've done for 20 years. Look at what the evidence tells you. You'll see over and over and over for hundreds of testimonies that they all give you the same exact story. Not my story. It's their story. It's their proof. They're the evidence that this has worked for these people. Don't listen to me. I can tell you this. Anybody else can tell you this. But it's the evidence that proves itself. And I bring the evidence. I don't come up on stage unless I, don't, I have the evidence with me. I don't bring fuzzy pictures. I don't bring, you know, foot shaky videos. I don't bring hearsay. I bring you the testimonies. And in every instance I go on stage, I try to bring you the living testimonies so you can actually talk to them in person. But the testimonies are written there. They're copied. I don't change them. I put them on the website just the way the people write them with misspellings and lousy, you know, grammar, the whole works. I want you to know that it's their story, not mine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I love the fact that you said, you know, don't trust Joe Jordan, because that's what I've always said on my show, too, is I said, don't take my word for it, folks. You know, go out and find out for yourself, because that's the most important thing. You have to do that. And um, I think that's that's the key here, isn't it? That people have to be able to make their own mind up and, and not be influenced by but I, <laughs> the flim flam people out there, and I'm not going to use names or I'm not going to go anywhere because I'm just going to get myself deeper in trouble here tonight. But I'm saying that whole, you know, from the bottom of my heart, folks, you've really got to start, you know, following, uh, you know, yourself and do your own research and listen to yourself. So there we are. Um, Joe, it's time for questions. It's 10 minutes till, so we got to we got to do it. So here sure. we go. We got two questions, and they're both very good questions. Mike says, could you ask Joe about the similarities between a satanic ritual and what an abduction an abductee goes through? Great question, Mike. And that's one of those red flags that we recognized years ago. You know, even the early um, researchers into the realm of abductions were recognizing the similarities. Uh, Valet even talks about the similarities uh, in, in the satanic rituals along with the experience. 
And that's a red flag that makes you go, wait a minute, why does it look like this if this is a supposed extraterrestrial experience? And that's something that we've always looked at through the time. And you'll see the same type of things uh, that satanic ritual experiences are, are involved with. Uh, the medical part of it, uh, the examination part of it, those are very similar to those type of experiences. And that's something you have to look at. We see that over and over and over. But, you know, people don't want to, they don't want to accept that when you tell them that, oh, no, it can't be satanic experience. You know, it's got to be something else. And that's why these entities, remember, this is about deception. This is about whatever it takes to make that person believe that they really had an extraterrestrial experience. That's why the facade of it being a doctor medical type experience compared to a full-blown satanic ritual experience. These entities aren't going to get you to follow them if they come as what they really are. They're coming in a guise in a facade to seduce and fool you and deceive you into following them and becoming acceptable to them. That's what this whole experience is about. Wow. Okay. Next question. Uh, Neutron asks, Joe, would you support the possible possible notion that some of the phenomena is indigenous to Earth, not interstellar, and is the result of a slow materialization of the negative souls once left here by Shiva, as per the Indus Valley Papers, and are materializing with the help of certain humans in exchange for power? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that I we had... Be, I can only be simple on that one because I don't... I mean, that's another another <laughs> somebody's idea because there are other beliefs that it could be possibly something related to all that. He's very close. I do believe that the, you know this, this whole thing is a material, materialization of these entities um, part of the experience, they have the ability to do that if it needs to to be able to convince you more completely that the experience is, is extraterrestrial. But that's only a part of it. I don't believe these entities can materialize and stay in this realm of any length of time. Um, if, if they're following the biblical sense, which is what they are, uh, then no, they can only use the ability of materialization to be able to deceive or if they're God's angels, to bring a message. We see that in Scripture, examples of it all over and over. But how it relates to the to the Hindu religion or anything like that, that I'm not aware of. Okay, good. Okay, nice answer, even though, you know, I think, I think you might be on to something, though. These negative souls, uh, I don't know. Well, I what just, do you mean by negative souls? You know, well, if, like I said, I, I have a standard demons, to go by. The demons. Well, the demons, are, <laughs> the demons are negative, but they're not souls, Okay. The demons oh, are the you. demons are, are part of that fallen realm that you know scripture tells us that a thir- third of the hosts of heaven which are the, you know the, the angelic realm um, fell with Satan they rebelled against God third of the hosts of, of heaven how many is that third who knows but you know a lot of theology thinks that maybe the believers that uh, on during their time on earth people have become a believer, uh, in Jesus Christ and follow him. And even the ones that, that are from the, uh, from the Jewish side prior to Christ, the ones that were followers of God, all those that died when their souls are moving on to heaven, uh, that were that third that's going to replace those angels. So you're talking about a whole bunch. You're talking about millions upon millions upon billions, you know, over the time, if that's the part that's replacing. And this is the demonic realm that we're fighting against. And the abilities that we see in angels in Scripture, God's angels being able to do, we see the same abilities in these so-called extraterrestrial experiences. And I have no doubt that if the fallen, if the God's good angels had these experiences, the fallen angels have the same types of abilities too. You know, so that seems to be what we're seeing. Um, are we dealing actually with fallen angels? I don't know. All I know is that the nature of these entities are demonic. Okay, I put them into the demonic classification. It seems to be in Scripture that they talk about a hierarchy of the demonic realm, but I couldn't tell you exactly what 
type of, you know, what part of that hierarchy we're actually dealing with in the abduction experience. Some people de- feel that that's the lowly demon. Some people feel that, no, they're all fallen angels. I don't know that answer. All I know is that they all fit into it. They follow a demonic master and a demonic plan. You know what I can't figure out, Joe, is why in- we have to go through any of this anyhow. Why can't we all just get along? <laughs> Why does there have to be demons? I mean, you know, I look at God and I say to him, gee, why did you have to create all this? I mean, you know, couldn't, wouldn't it have been nicer if there were no aliens and we were all just growing fruits and vegetables and having a great life? I mean, well, I don't get that's it. That's coming. That's coming. But what he wanted was not to have it all robotic to where all you had to do was wait in, <laughs> oh, excuse me, to wait in line, grab a ticket, and you're good. He wants, he wants you to come to him in free will, in free choice, in, you know, you make the freedom. He wants to give everybody the freedom to choose. That's an honest, loving God, not to be in total control over all, we're all no more than just the plants you're talking about harvesting because we don't have a choice, you know. He says that he he made everything for us to be able to make that choice. Everything in his creation points to him, okay, and you know, there's a comment in Scripture that says, if you've been told and shown the truth and you refuse, it's like you never were alive in the first place. So be careful. Once that piece of the puzzle of the truth has been brought and shared with you, and that's the danger is when you decide to not choose him. That's where, you know, it becomes dangerous for your eternity, okay? Because everything that's that he's that's made available for you to freely see him and understand him and know he's there. It's all been made available for you. So the, he's given you full free choice and everything to make that choice honestly. But yet people will still choose the dark side. You know, there's such a seduction there. And that's what we're seeing with all of these experiences. And, Joe, what are we going to do about all the people who, like I said earlier in the show, they just love what they're going through? Are they just never going to be able to be helped? You know, is it just a hopeless cause? Or do you think that we can help uh, it, educate them enough so they understand that this really is a, a, a very evil type of thing they're doing and that they've got to break the cycle or they're never going to be free on many different levels? You know, how do you we. Just, you just did. You just did by having this show. You know, you asked, how can I be of help for all of this? Your voice and your ability to promote and your ability to have radio shows and host radio shows, it's not something I want to do, but you love doing it, and you have that ability. You have people's ear. All you have to do is, if you want a child to learn right and wrong, you have to show them what's right and what's wrong. For them to make an honest decision, they have to see both sides. You've just given these people who have never heard this before and never heard it and made fully understandable, you've just given that to them. So now they have that opportunity to, to, to look at this, to maybe inspect it a little bit more, and to make that honest decision whether they really want to choose where they've been going or whether they really like to have a real life back without all this craziness and be able to move on. Yeah, and you know, and so many of the people I talk to and I say, look, just don't let it happen, you know, and they go, oh, but it'll never stop. They're hopeless. And, you know, so that is... They've been lied to. Yes, absolutely. See, that's the thing, and I I worry about that sometimes. I worry about the the line to them, you know, that it can't ever stop. It can stop. I I know it. I've I've had several friends that have done exactly what you've said to do, and they are becoming free of the, the problems. And one of them, I swear to you folks out there, she's been plagued for 40 years, 40 years almost every night, taking her away, and she's not happy about it. And she finally started doing what Joe was suggested and she's starting to get a little bit of a normal life back for herself and i'm just so happy for her so anyhow hey joe i can't believe it tell people how to get to, uh, it's the show's almost over tell people how to get to your website so they can check out the testimonies and watch you in your presentation because you're fabulous the website is real simple it's www.ce the number four research.com 
and all of my web, all of my information, all of my findings, all of my videos, all my talks are up there, and everything is free. I never charge for the truth. The truth was freely given to me when I came to the truth, and I'm going to freely give it out there to anybody else. So all of this, all of the information you need to come to the truth and have your life back the way it should be, back to normalcy without this craziness, deception, and lies is right there and available for you. Great. Well, thank you, Joe. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week on the California MUFON Radio Show. Have a great one.